Hi, Sam from Sound on Sound. I'm here at the AES show in Los Angeles uh, with Matt Hines of Isotope. Isotope showing one of the most talked about new products here at AES. Uh, yeah. He's going to talk us through Isotope's Neutron. Yeah, that's correct. Um, so thanks for joining us. Uh, we've had a great reception so far. Introducing, as you can see, Neutron. So what is Neutron? Well, at a glance, you can see we have a channel strip here. There's an equalizer. There's a multiband compressor, digital, uh, as well as vintage. You can switch between the two sonic characteristics. We have a pretty cool exciter. You can blend between different saturation types. It's kind of unique. And actually a brand new transient shaper, which is fantastic, especially on drums and percussive material. But aside from it being a really good sounding channel strip, which you might use in your day-to-day -day work and across as many tracks as possible, there's two new features, and those are the, the talked about features, if you will, that we're, we're showing off at the show. Uh, so first of all, as you can see when I went through, there's nothing going on yet. There's no settings happening. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick blast of the session so you can hear what it sounded like before, and then I'll go through showing you the track assistant and also the masking meter. So this is the chorus of the song. So you can see it's a typical rock mix. We have lead vocals, electric guitars, bass drums, and there's also a drum machine in there sort of layered in with the drum kit as well. So the first thing I'm going to show you is track assistance. Something Isotope always does with any of our products is deliver a lot of presets. Not as the be all and the end all. We certainly don't want you to take a, a preset, select it, and, and bounce your audio out. But it is a cool creative starting point. It might suggest to you, hey, here's a place to begin. So that's what track assistant is designed to do. Um, I actually have Neutron here on my drum bus, my stereo drum bus. All my drums are rooted into this instance of Neutron. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press play, and I'm going to hit Track Assistant. And you'll see it goes into a learning mode, and it actually will identify the instrument down here. It will tag it as drums, and it will create a customized preset tuned to my audio. So I'll show you that, and then we'll talk through what it did and perhaps why it did what it did. Cool, so maybe four, six seconds, not that long. As you can see, it tagged it as drums. It actually set a signal flow for me. And then in each module, it gave me some, some gentle suggested settings as a starting point. Now it's not just going to a, to a bank of presets and selecting one and just saying, all right, here you go. It's actually doing something intelligent. So first of all, in my equalizer, I'm just going to reset this. I'm going to run Track Assistant in again. And what you'll notice is the nodes actually start to jump around and move into place. And so what's actually happening is the EQ is analyzing the audio signal and looking for any areas of resonance, you know, buildup, harshness, sibilance, subjective terms that we all use. Um, and it, with that information, it will then place notes for you. And it's a pretty useful ear training tool as well. If I solo just my drums, what I'm going to do now is, for instance, EQ node 3, it placed it here at 450 hertz. Let's take a listen to why it might have done that. I'm going to boost it, and we'll see what material is present. Sort of that kind of slightly resonant boxiness in the mid-range. I'll solo the note as well. So at a glance, it will place those notes. And for subtractive EQ, it's a phenomenally powerful tool, especially on audio sources that are kind of hard to navigate. Um, and actually, I think I'm going to duck over to uh, my lead vocals and show you what it does on lead vocals. Um, so I'm here in my chorus. I should probably unsolo the drums. And uh, let's see, vocals, chorus. Um, before I run it, I just want to point out, so the algorithm is intelligent, but you have some level of control over the kind of preset you would like it to create for you. It could be subtle, it could be medium and aggressive. Uh, aggressive means you know, the compression will be heavier, there'll be more multibands, things like that. And then some subjective directions for the algorithm. So I'm going to stick with uh, medium, broadband, and let's see what it does for my voice. Well, well, 
so you can see it tagged it as vocals. It actually gave me a completely different signal flow to my drums. It's placed different EQ nodes, and these are some dynamic cuts pulling out some of that, that nasal harshness present in the vocal. So it's a lot smoother. And then in the compressor as well, it decided, okay, a single band of very gentle vintage compression. Uh, over here, another single band of very gentle uh, vintage compression. If I ran it on aggressive mode, for instance, uh, it will probably look for a few more places and do a little bit more processing. see vintage compression but a much higher ratio uh, and here we actually have two bands of compression and some sidechain filtering going on and some some excited that's been dialed in so that's the idea of the track assistant uh, for folks who really enjoy using presets as a creative starting point I think our problem philosophically has always been you select a preset and it maybe was designed over here on this piece of audio but it certainly wasn't designed over here with your audio whereas this feature will create a preset that is designed with your audio in mind now, of course, you take it as a starting point and a starting point only, and you can move on and maybe add some more EQ, change the signal flow if you want, really whatever it is that you as a mix engineer would do. And just to point out, there is an undo history. So you can see here I ran Track Assistant. If you don't like what it did, you can always step back. You don't lose anything. It's actually fantastic for quick ABs if you want to do something like this. You know, A, B, A, B, and sort of while you're playing back. So the other feature I'm going to show you is what we're calling the masking meter. Now, of course, Track Assistant is listening to just the drums or the guitar, whatever it is you put it on, and it's making decisions based on that track in isolation. But as a mix engineer, you want to be thinking about the overall balance. You know, how does my kick relate to my bass or my lead vocal relate to my lead guitar? And really any elements that are happening at the same time, of course, the art of what you, know, you and I do is balancing those things together in a way that sounds musical. So. Um, I'm actually going to pull up uh, here the Neutron on my kick drum. And as you can see, I do have it loaded throughout my session. So it is very CPU efficient. Um, it's zero latency compatible as well with that, that button right there. It's pretty fantastic. So I have it on my kick drum. Before I go any further, I want to point out that every instance of Neutron that is in this mix, and I think there's about 20 or 30 or so, can see every other instance of Neutron. You don't need to do patching or routing. They just know about each other. We're taking care of that for you. So in my kick drum, I'm in my EQ and I have a button called masking. If I hit that button, you can see every other instance of Neutron in my mix is being shown in a drop-down menu. Now with that information, for instance, here I'm going to select bass, what I'm actually able to do is see my kick drum equalizer at the top. This is actually my bass guitar equalizer at the bottom. And up here, above the frequency spectrum, I'm going to press play and what you'll notice is there's a little heat map, a histogram. So what we're doing is we're calculating when these two audio sources combine and are summed together. We know the perceptual loudness of the kick, we know the perceptual loudness of the bass, and now if you put them together, we can understand perhaps where they might be masking one another. Now, of course, frequencies happening at the same time doesn't necessarily mean that they're masking one another, but past a certain threshold, it can make it difficult to hear. I think kick and bass for me is something I struggle with a lot and dialing in exactly where I need to separate those elements. So I'm just going to hit play, and uh, you'll see some, probably some action in the meter, and then we can use that to direct our EQ. So what you are seeing there as we played through the chorus is there seem to be three main areas in the histogram where the meter is telling me, hey, the bass and the kick are competing here. Now, of course, as the mix engineer, it's up to you to decide what do you do with that information, much like you would decide what you do with a peak meter, an RMS meter, or a short-term meter, all the, the types of metering available in the output bus of Neutron, for instance. Well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit play, and I'm going to start some additive EQ. I'm going to boost some areas of my kick drum. Now just a quick pro tip if I pull up the, the detailed view. I don't want to, especially in the low end, be boosting always. 
if you put it in dynamic mode and expand, it's only going to boost those frequencies when the kick is actually present, hitting above that threshold. Cool. That's only one part of the puzzle, of course. What you need to do is be balancing the bass with the kick. Well, so now with this functionality, and I'm just going to pull the, uh, uh, the bass equalizer up. Because, of course, this is how traditionally we'd do it, right? We would say, go tweak the bass here, go tweak the, the bass here, the kick there, I'm sorry. Well, we don't need to do that anymore because we have everything in one place and the plugins can talk to each other. So now what I'm going to do, you can see any change I make here in this view is actually being reflected smartly in the, the bass equalizer. So I'm going to hit play and now I'm going to do some subtractive EQ in my bass to help pull them apart in the areas that the meter is telling me I might want to. Now, I'm EQing here, I'm EQing there. Well, one of the things we introduced is an inverse link feature so that if I am, for instance, boosting node 5, you can see anything I do in the other track is also happening at the same time. It's, you know, inverse link, so best practice rather than do, I don't know, something like 8 dB boost in the kick drum would probably be a nightmare. Well, now you could do 2 dB boost and it's going to do a 2 dB cut on the other end and probably that will be more effective than just turning the gain of the kick up significantly. So it's kind of fun, actually, to play around and, and tease things apart. Now, of course, this being um, a, a dynamic equalizer, I'm just going to change my scale here to give you more insight into this crazy-looking curve that's going on here. You might not come up with this curve in a regular environment, but actually using the meter, it's kind of an interesting discovery to, to figure out, well, where is it guiding me and does it sound good? Of course, we have a bypass button. You can bypass both EQs at once because it ultimately does have to sound good. You want to make sure you're A-Bing. Now, I think listening back, the bass is a little bit too gone. I do want them both to be present and just interacting with one another. So the last piece of the puzzle, down here I can say, OK, dynamic mode, compress. It's only going to press when, compress when the signal present. I'm going to say, well, let me sidechain my, uh, my kick drum. And now I have a very, very powerful sidechain EQ. I can say, hey, I want you to compress my bass based on band one of the kick drum signal. So now what's going to happen, and I'm going to make sure I do that over here as well. Uh, let me do band two. So what you'll notice now is that the bass equalizer is reacting to the kick. And so with that information, I could even, you know, go ahead and maybe this node here, even boost a little bit of the, the bass because I don't want that bottom end to fully drop out because the problematic frequencies, I'm ducking away. And you can do this all across the, the whole mix. Um, I actually don't know what to expect if I pull up, let's say, the, uh, the vocals and the chorus. Um, I set an EQ curve with track assistance, so I obviously want to make sure everything balances, right? Uh, I'm going to take my guitar in the chorus, and I'm just going to see where my guitar and where my lead vocals might be competing, if they are at all. So at the very least, it's telling me, hey, go look and listen around 500 hertz. There's some, uh, some weirdness happening there. And you might go listen and say, I'm OK with that. Conversely, you might go listen and say, actually, that 500, 500 hertz range, if I dock that guitar, suddenly my vocal sounds more full and more present. So that's the idea with Neutron. It's, as I said at the beginning, fantastic sounding suite of mixing tools, regardless of the track assistant and the masking meter. It's very lightweight, CPU efficient. And as with Neutrino, the free product we delivered and the spectral shaping algorithm that you can see is still present in the bottom right-hand corner, this is all about subtlety and balance. Uh, I will say my personal favorite, if you don't want subtlety, you can totally drive the harmonic exciter, especially on retro, get that sort of 1960s era Beatles guitar sound. You can get there is my point. But overall, 
this is meant for subtlety, balance, allowing you, like you would use any other meter, to understand how tracks relate to one another, but give you the facility to fix it too. And to deliver presets that are a little better than just static presets, you know? Uh, so we're pretty proud of it. It's had a great reception so far at AES. Uh, it's going to be available very, very soon. And we look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about it. And uh, how much can we expect to pay for this magic? So there's actually two versions of Neutron. Um, everything I showed in this video is Neutron Standard. A Neutron Standard is available for $249. There is going to be a promo price. It's going to be $199 for the first month. And then Neutron Advanced, you might ask, what's the difference? So each module that I have, the equalizer, the compressor, and excited transient shaper, well, in advanced, you get those as component plugins. So if you don't want the rest of the noise, you know, you don't want the limiter or the spectral shaping, and perhaps you don't want the whole signal flow, well, advanced gets you those four additional plugins, and you can just use the, the bits of it that you want. Uh, and for those who are working in surround sound, which I appreciate is, is not everyone, but surround sound support exists in the advanced version as well. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Matt. Thank you.